I've been ready to die for many years. If the Lord was done with me, so be it, but he's not. You've seen the Night King, Jon Snow. You know the Great War is still to come. You know the army of the dead will be upon us soon. And you know I can help you win that war. Hello, sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. And today we are going to visit the visions that Melisandre had in a dance with dragons. What exactly did she see and who exactly could she be? Trying to understand Melisandre has been a really, it's just been a roller coaster. But let's crack this case wide open. Melisandre is in the books in multiple different POVs from Clash of Kings on up to the Dance of Dragons. But in the Dance of Dragons, we get an awesome chapter from Melisandre's point of view. This gives us a deeper look into who she is and what she wants and where her story could be going in the show. So Melisandre is a devout worshiper of R'hllor. But Melisandre says herself that she has studied her magics for years beyond count. I mean, years beyond count. I mean, once you get past 200, do you stop counting? Like, once you, like, maybe 500? I, I'm not sure. But she says that there is no one in her order who has the skills at seeing the secrets half revealed and half concealed within the sacred flames. Okay, let's be real for a minute. If she's the best in her order, then to be honest, her order kind of sucks. But when she's saying this, she's thinking this to herself, so she's not lying. She is indeed the best in her order, or at least she thinks that she is. So Melisandre, she doesn't need to eat. She doesn't need to sleep. Like, she has to remind herself to do these normal things so that she can seem normal. But she doesn't need to do them to sustain life. She was stronger at the wall. Stronger even than in a shy. Her every word and gesture was more potent, and she could do things that she had never done before. Such shadows as I bring forth here will be terrible, and no creature of the dark will stand before them. With such sorceries at her command, she should soon have no more need of the feeble tricks of alchemists and pyromancers. Why in the world would a priestess of R'hllor, the Lord of Light, be stronger at the wall and everything always starts with a question so maybe she's stronger at the wall because the wall is a hinge of the world but i don't know about that so melisandre says that she's a shadow binder from a shy she says she was sold to the red temple at Volantis as a slave but nothing really is adding up for melisandre so let's look at melisandre Melisandre is one of our magical red-eyed characters. We have a few red-eyed characters. Melisandre, Bloodraven, the Ghost of High Heart, Ghost, and Drogon. Red eyes seem to be the mark of Greenseers, and Melisandre has red eyes. Those you call the children of the forest have eyes as golden as the sun, but once in a great while, one is born amongst them with eyes as red as blood or green as the moss on the tree in a heart of a forest. By those signs do the gods mark those they have chosen to receive the gift. That is also strange. Why would a green seer be born in Ashai, or in Volantis, or in Essos for that matter? And speaking of Ashai, why would there even be a children in Ashai? Children don't live in Ashai. Anyway, maybe she was born somewhere else and she later went to Ashai. But where is she from, if not from Ashai? Her visions in the Dance with Dragons give us a huge eye-awakening clue. A face took shape within the hearth. Stannis, she thought, for just a moment. But no, these were not his features. A wooden face, corpse white, was this the enemy? A thousand red eyes floated in the rising flames. He sees me. Beside him, a boy with a wolf's face threw back his head and howled. The red priestess shuddered. Blood trickled down her thigh, black and smoking. The fire was inside her, an agony, an ecstasy, 
filling her, searing her, transforming her. Shimmers of heat trace patterns on her skin, insistent as a lover's hand. Strange voices called to her from days long past. Melanie, she heard a woman cry. A man's voice called, Lot Seven. She was weeping and her tears were flame and still she drank it in. Snowflakes swirled from a dark sky and ashes rose to meet them. The gray and the white whirling around each other as flaming arrows arced above a wooden wall and dead things shambled silent through the cold. Beneath a great gray cliff where fires burned inside a hundred caves. Then the wind rose and the white mist came sweeping in, impossibly cold. And one by one, the fires went out. Afterward, only the skulls remained. So, Melisandre's real name is implied to be Melanie. And she was sold at what seems to be a slave auction. And she was sold in Lot 7. So, after she gets the Melanie flashback, she then sees Hard Home. Now, what you might not know about Hard Home is there was some disaster there many, many years ago, like years beyond count, and it's considered cursed. Hard Home had been halfway toward becoming a town, the only true town north of the Wall, until the night 600 years ago when hell had swallowed it. Its people had been carried off into slavery or slaughtered for meat, depending on which version of the tale you believed. Their homes and halls were consumed in a conflagration that burned so hot that watchers on the wall far to the south had thought the sun was rising in the north. Afterward, ashes rained down on the haunted forest and shivering sea alike for almost half a year. Traders reported finding old nightmarish devastation where hard home had stood. A landscape of charred trees and burned bones, waters choked with swollen corpses, blood chilling shrieks echoing from the cave mouths that pocked the great cliff that loomed above the settlement. So we know from that passage about Hard Home that she was definitely seeing Hard Home in her vision. But why? Why did she get that Melanie Lot 7 right before she saw? Hard home. Was she seeing hard home when the White Walkers were invading, or was she seeing hard home from so many years ago, like years beyond count? So, the truest version of the tale seems to be that the people from hard home were carried off into slavery. Hard home and slavery seem to go hand in hand throughout the story. When Arya is in Bravos, she has to learn three things when she comes back to the kindly man. And one of the things that she tells the kindly man is about slaves. I know where the slaves came from. They were wildlings from Westeros, from a place called Hardhome, an old ruined place, accursed. Old Nan had told her tales of Hardhome back at Winterfell when she had still been Arya Stark. So when Arya is speaking of this, she is speaking of the right now, like what's happening right now in the story, like the people taking slaves from hard home right now. But if it's happening now, you best believe it's happened before. So was Melisandre from hard home when she heard her name and lot seven in those voices from the past, why does she immediately see hard home? So we have established that she was indeed a slave and slavers were stealing people from hard home. And Melisandre has the markings of a green seer. But not only this, listen to this from the world of ice and fire. A most fascinating account of hard home can be found in Maester Willis's hard home. An account of three years spent beyond the wall among savages, raiders, and woods witches. Woods witches, they say. Well, we know a woods witch. And this woods witch has red eyes. The ghost of high heart. The Ghost of High Heart also has dreams or visions of things to come, just like Melisandre. Melisandre sees hers in the flames, though, which probably makes it a little harder. Like, if she would go to sleep, her visions would probably be, like, more accurate because she'd actually be having green dreams. But anyway, Melisandre is also referred to as a witch on many occasions. And fun fact, 
The show combined the Ghost of High Heart story with Melisandre's story. Like Melisandre is like a composite. She has some of those things that the Ghost of High Heart had. Like the whole thing that transpired between Arya and Melisandre, that doesn't happen in the books. But in the books, when Arya is with the Brotherhood, Arya does indeed have words with the Ghost of High Heart. And the Ghost of High Heart is terrified of Arya and it's very reminiscent of the scene with Arya and Melisandre. Also, unglamored Melisandre looks like the Ghost of High Heart. This could easily mean nothing, but I just find it odd, especially when you take into account where I think Melisandre is from, Hardhome, and Melisandre being a green seer. The wall being made with a green seer magic, the wall being in the north with weirwoods everywhere and roots connecting in and all through the ground and the black gate, all of this makes sense as to why Melisandre is stronger at the wall. It's because she's a green seer. So let's, let's say that Melisandre is from Westeros. She's a wildling from beyond the wall, hard home to be exact. She was sold into slavery, but not only that, she has the blood of a green seer. What would that mean? What would her purpose then be in the story? I have two thoughts on what her purpose could be. One thing that she could do is she could try to get into the weirwood net and get into the Night King's head. As far as magic goes, she's way more learned at it than anyone else in the story. But I think something else fits her story a little better. Even if she tries to get in the Night King's head first, her fate will end in sacrifice. But sometimes sacrifices must be made to ensure victory. We hear time and time again about blood sacrifice and king's blood, but the blood of a green seer is so rare that it will be more potent of a sacrifice than any other blood. Green seers are basically royalty of the children. They are their priest. If Melisandre was fed to the weirwoods, to the old gods, Bran would receive the sacrifice. His power level would skyrocket. Melisandre has said she has to die in this strange land. And John has already said that if he sees her again, he will kill her. And the Stark way is the old way feed the trees. The powerful magic that the children used to bring down the hammers of the waters was said to be achieved with grisly sacrifice. Some say that they fed a thousand captives to the tree, but the darker tale says they fed the tree their own young. Their own blood is probably way more powerful than a mere mortal's blood. And I believe the woman that has sacrificed so many people and gave them to the flames and gave them to R'hllor, she will reap what she sowed. And her green seer blood will water the heart tree at Winterfell. And this will be the turning point in the wars to come. Vala Mogulis. But what do you think? Do you think Melisandre is a green seer and she will be like this huge sacrifice or that she could possibly get inside the Night King's head and try to mess with him? Kind of like what he did to Bran? I do actually think that she will be like this huge sacrifice. I think she'll actually go willingly and I think Bran may reveal to her who she is. She may come disguised as old Melisandre, but then Bran will have her all figured out. New age, Nisa Nisa, feed the tree, history repeats. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Shame. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day. Shame. Shame.